three. Today, uh, we're going to be doing some maths together. What I put together up here is basically a presentation that links to the work we put on our website for you for Tuesday the 5th of May, which is to learn how to add up different units of length. So I'm going to talk you through some examples of questions and when you have a look at the worksheet, you will hopefully see that the examples we've gone through match up with the examples on the worksheet so you can work on the questions yourself and hopefully get through them um, confidently. So the first thing I'm going to show you up here is actually just a quick matching activity. Um, these are really useful things to do. Just to check that you've been able to understand how to convert between the different measures. Um, we've been practicing that a lot over the past um, couple of weeks, hopefully via the home learning. So up here, what we have is a lot of different measurements. Um, some of them are just in millimetres, some of them are in metres and centimetres, just in centimetres for example, and this kind of matching activity, I would approach it um, quite simply just by looking at the first one to start with and working my way down the list. So over here, the first example says 35 millimetres. Now I know that there are 10 millimetres in every centimetre. So by having 35 millimetres, I should know that that is equal to three whole centimetres and five extra millimetres. So if I was going to be matching up 35 millimetres, I would be going over here to three whole centimetres and five millimetres. I won't go through any of the others, but uh, that is how you would hopefully approach that kind of question. And the more you do this kind of thing, the more confident you're going to feel with it over time. The next example is this one here, and this kind of question you will find um, on the work we've set you for today. It says, some children threw tennis balls and measured how far they had travelled. So we've got three children here, and next to each child's name, there are three different measurements to show how far they were able to throw those three tennis balls. If you want to work out which child has thrown the longest total distance, what we need to do is to add up the lengths that Molly has thrown, that Luca has thrown, and that Francis has thrown. Now I'm going to show you the example um, for Luca. Um, just because that calculation has got some tricky parts to it. So the first thing I would do would be to look at his first measurement, which is 123 centimetres. And the second measurement on the list there is 223 for Luca. So I'll write that up as well, making sure that I'm using my place value columns accurately. And then the last number for Luca is not a hundredth number. It is 34 centimetres and 5 millimetres. So I've got to remember, you can write the place value columns up the top if it helps you. Got to remember for 34 centimetres, there are no hundreds. So the hundreds column would be empty. And then my 34 centimetres would go there. And then for the 5 millimetres on the end, I actually need to have my tenths column in my place values um, columns up here. Now we did look a little bit at having a decimal point and then another digit when we were looking at working on perimeter last week. So hopefully this looks a bit familiar to you. Once I've got all my numbers written down, I'll just draw my answer box and I'm going to add up the columns one at a time, starting from the tenths column. And as you can see, nothing in there apart from number five, which I'll put there. You need to remember your decimal point, goes in the answer box as well. And then we add up the ones column, three and three and six and four make ten. And that'll be written like this. And then we've got two and two make four plus. 3 is 7, plus 1 there is 8, and then we have 1 and 2, nothing there, which makes 3. 
So Luca threw in total 380.5 centimetres. And once you've done that process for each of the three children, you will be able to tell which child has thrown the longest distance. And if we just show you the answer to that question, it was in fact Francis who had thrown the longest distance. You can give your answers, just so you know, either in centimetres, uh, like I have here, or you could convert your answer into metres and centimetres. Both ways of doing it are absolutely fine. The next sort of question that you're going to be faced with on your worksheet is questions like this one, which ask you to complete the bar model. Now, you've seen bar models throughout year two, and we looked at them in year three as well. And just to remind you how they work, in this example, the bar at the top is where we need to find the missing answer because we have the question mark there. And these three sections underneath, all of those would add up together to make this number here at the top. So very similarly to the previous question, I need to add up these three numbers. And if you look carefully, you will see we've got a metres here, three metres. Then we move to a measurement in centimetres, 184. And then finally, we have a measurement which combines metres and centimetres. And the best thing to do when you are tackling this kind of question is actually to make sure that all of your measurements are in the same unit of measure. So I'm going to be converting the metres into centimetres before I add them all up. So three metres in centimetres. Now, I know that there are 100 centimetres in one metre. So if I have three metres, there must be 300 centimetres in that three metres. The next measure, 184, I can keep that exactly the same because it is already in centimetres. And the last measurement, 3 metres and 45 centimetres, I will use what I know from here. So my 3 metres must be 300 centimetres and then I would add on my 45 like that. And then to find that number, missing number at the top, I would then complete my addition. So my ones column here, four add five would give me nine. My tens column here, eight add four would give me 12. And then my hundreds column here, I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that there would be 829 centimeters. And that number is what you would put into your top bar there. You could have it in centimetres or you could have it in metres and centimetres. And this is how those kind of examples work. And there are some of those for you to do on your worksheet today. The next example here is very, very similar. We call these part whole models. Again, you will have come across this in year two and we have worked on them in year three as well. It works in exactly the same way. To find this missing number here, we need to add up the numbers that we have in those bottom circles, uh, making sure that we are adding them up in the same units of measure, like with this example. And when you've added everything up, you will get to this number here at the top. So I'm not going to go through the adding for you for this question. You can do it at home yourself if you would like. Uh, the answer here, 561 centimetres or 5 metres and uh, this next example um, of a question looks a little bit different. What we have got here is three rulers, and next to each ruler is a pencil, and the question is asking you to find the total length of the pencils. Now, it might be a bit tricky for you to see this one on your screen, but hopefully when you've got your own 
ones in front of you, you can read the scales, read the rulers much more easily. This first pencil here is what we need to work out the length of to start with. And I can see I'm up to six whole centimetres there. And then it is three extra little millimetres. So the first pencil would be 6.3 centimetres. This second pencil is shorter. If we look up the ruler here, it is three whole centimetres. And then one, two, three, four, five, six extra millimetres. So that would be 3.6 centimetres. And then moving on to this last one here, much longer pencil, it goes all the way up past the nine, is 9.3 centimetres. So nine centimetres and three millimetres. Once we've worked out how long each of those pencils is, we need to add them all together to find the total length. So we can just do our normal addition calculation that we would normally do. You can have the centimetres on the end to start with, or you can leave them off and add it on at the end. That's no problem. You also need to make sure that you have your decimal points in a straight line in the answer box there. And then we start with the column on the right hand side. In this case, it's the tenths column. And we would add three and six, which is nine, one more three, which is 12, which we write in our answer box like that. And then we've got our ones column here, six and three is nine. And we've got another nine, 18, and one there makes 19. So the total length of those three pencils is 19.2 centimetres or 19 whole centimetres and two millimetres. Or you could even have 192 millimetres. Many different ways you can present your answer for that question. And there's one more example I'd like to talk you through today, which is this question here. It says, which three ribbons can add together to give a length between 11 centimetres and 14 centimetres? This is a bit of a trial and improvement type question. You might not get the right answer the first time round, but you would need to select three of those measurements and you would need to add them up and see if the total length was between those two measurements there. One thing to do before you start, like we talked about previously, would be to make sure when you are adding up the different lengths, that they are all in the same unit of measure to make it easy for yourself. For example, if I were to add up the yellow, the orange and the blue, I've got two of those measurements are already in millimetres. The yellow is 54 millimetres and the orange is 19 millimetres. So I would probably turn the blue measurements into millimetres as well. So I know that in one centimetre there are 10 millimetres, so in five centimetres there are going to be 50 millimetres, and then that extra seven there would make 57. So if I add together the yellow, which is 54 millimetres, the orange, which is 19 millimetres, and the blue, which is 57 millimetres, if I add those up together, what you should find is that you get your answer, which you can then convert into centimetres to see if it falls between 11 and 14. So if I have got 4 plus 9, which is 13, and I'm going to add on my 7, which would be 20, like this, and then I've got 5 and 1 is Six plus another five, which is 11, plus two, which is 13. That there gives me 130 millimetres. And that isn't exactly the answer I'm looking for, because the question is asking for a measurement in centimetres. So all you need to do there is to work out well, how many centimetres is 130 millimetres. And 
The way that we do that is if we divide this number by 10, which we had done last week in your measures work, write it up here. So if we have 130, and if we divide it by 10, what we know is that if we remove this zero in terms of our place value, we end up with 13. And so 13 centimetres, as you can see, gives a length between 11 centimetres and 14 centimetres. So those last three lengths there, those are the right ones to choose for that question. Well, year three, I hope this has been helpful. Obviously, it's not the same as you all being here with us in the classroom, but hopefully this will give you an idea of how to answer today's questions from the website. Uh, good luck, and uh, we hope to see you all soon.